To be like Jesus, to be like Jesus, all I ask is to be like Him all through life's journey from earth to glory. All I ask is to be like Him. How many of you know that old song? Try it again. To be like Jesus, to be like Jesus, all I ask is to be like Him all through life's journey. From earth to glory, all I ask is to be like Him. I ask you a question. Is it possible to be like Jesus? Is it possible to be like Jesus? Well, Jesus is God, so in that respect, no, because he's fully God as though he were not man at all and fully man as though he were not God at all. But I believe that there's a lot of precedent in Scripture that the character of God, the fruit of God, God's Spirit, the power of God, to see in things as God sees, and being able to minister the way God wants to be ministered is there. For after all, didn't Jesus say, it's good that I go away. If I don't go away, the Holy Spirit will not come to you. But when he comes, he will, he will guide you and lead you into all truth. And then later in John, he says, and greater things than I have done, you shall do because the Spirit of God is in you. Amen? All right, so let's just say some of you think, well, yes, that's a good song to sing, to be like Jesus. That's a great desire to be there. Uh, I'm not talking about sinless perfection. I'm not talking about becoming deity. So get that off your head, okay? I'm talking about walking with God very close and having God's power flow through us. Now, let me ask you this question. Is it possible to be like Smith Wigglesworth? How many know who Smith Wigglesworth was? How many actually know what he did? Okay, what year he was born. I, I, I felt very strongly led, and here's, here's my goal tonight. I want to challenge you to believe in a God that truly is all-powerful and manifests his all-power through you. I want you to ask yourself and question yourself, that do you love God more or food more? Do you love God more or entertainment more? Do you love God more or family more? And I bring this tonight in particular knowing ahead that there would be a few people here. You see, I, I don't come to speak worried about how many people. I, I remember Sunday nights when we had 15, 20. Carrie, you remember that too. We preached to some pretty small crowds back then. Now, do I wish there were more here? Yeah, but I'm not going to throw any stones or cat because it is Mother's Day. And I know a lot of people went to be with mom. Some people came to early church and left, didn't stay for Sunday school to go be with mom somewhere. And I'm good with that. Uh, I think moms are to be honored and all that. But I do appreciate you being here. And I believe that it's no accident you're here. And I don't think it takes very many people to get a hold of a truth that God has a purpose and a plan for every one of us and his spirit and power is enough to do what God has called each one of us to do and there's something way beyond your human ability that God can do through you because he's the one that said greater things than these that I have done shall you do because of my spirit. What did it say in Acts 1.8? And that's basically my text and you know it probably most of you. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both Jerusalem and Judea, Samaria, under the uttermost parts of the earth. 
I want to just, before I get into Smith Wigglesworth, I want to talk to you about what that power and witness power is of the Spirit. That witness power of the Spirit is the Spirit of God that changes you, changes your life, changes who you are. Uh, the, the Spirit power that ha- gives you supernatural abilities by the supernatural Holy Spirit gifts, the nine gifts, to know the word of knowledge, to have wisdom, the word of wisdom, God's word of wisdom to you beyond a human perspective where people are like, their eyes are wide open when they see God's spirit flow through you. Healing, the gift of healing, the gift of miracles, uh, of tongues, interpretation of tongues, of prophecy, anointed, the quickening, a powerful message and uh, of faith uh, and uh, that God's spirit would flow through us in those ways. So I, I, wanna, I, I want to encourage you, and I may, I may not have mentioned every one of them that, that wasn't intending to, but I want to encourage you that the power of God, when the Holy Spirit came upon them in Acts chapter 2, and the power of God's spirit full in us opens up an avenue to do things and to be used of God and to be used in the gifts like you've never imagined possible. Not to, it's not for us to be weird. It's not for us to show off our tongue. Paul uses that whole thing in 1 Corinthians 13 where he puts the thing about love. I told someone this week, you know, the what God's power and spirit manifest in me. When I feel God's power and God's spirit, I feel love for everybody. When God's spirit is powerful enough, I can't hold on to a grudge or an unforgiveness. My heart is filled with love for everybody because it is the fruit of the spirit, love. I let it go because it's not about me. I get enough of God, I get enough of his spirit, and there's a witness of the power of God's love. And to me, to me, the, the presence of God and the power of God lives through the heart of a person that sees and the things that, as the way God sees them and feels about them the way God feels about them and then has power to do something about it. You've heard me say many times, God help me see what you see and feel what you feel about every situation, but I, let me have the power to move as if you would move when you were up on this earth by the same spirit to see something change, to see a power. And I want to say that it only takes one person here tonight to truly get a hold of this and get hungry before God, to begin to see our life is not temporary and not carnal and not flesh and blood, but we are spirit, for we're made after God's image and God is spirit, and uh, we worship him in spirit and in truth, and we are spirit. And I'm telling you, we have more potential with God's spirit in us than you can ever imagine. See, we're born again. Born again means we have the Holy Spirit. The Spirit, we're baptized. We, I talked about it a couple of weeks ago on Sunday night into the, same, the body of Christ by the Spirit of God. Not, not, not the Acts 2 baptism that it talks about. I'm talking about salvation when the Spirit comes and baptizes you into the body of Christ. In other words, when you get saved, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the life of Christ comes into you. It's powerful. It's powerful. There is a change in your life. The late uh, Adrian Rogers says, if your religion doesn't change you, you need to change your religion. And I believe it. And Smith Wigglesworth is someone that I've read off and on and the Holy Spirit brought to my mind this week. And so I thought, how do I tell all the things he did? How can I do this? So I'm gonna start off with an autobiography that I found. And then I'm gonna give you his own testimonies about things that happened from his own message that he shared. And so I'm gonna share a little piece of Smith Wigglesworth hoping and believing that God has given me this to do to let you understand that probably we're living powerless. We know about the power. We have the belief in the doctrines of all of it and of the spirit, but do we walk in the power? Jesus rebuked his disciples, and I'm not meaning to rebuke you because I, I don't consider myself Jesus, but he said, oh, ye a little faith, and he says, this comes out by fasting and prayer, and it has a, a heart of a hunger for God, something that God does in our heart that we're willing to pay a price. And so I challenge you with becoming a spiritual powerhouse 
by the Spirit of Almighty God for His power. Uh, you'll receive the power when the Holy Spirit is upon you. And listen, I'm not talking about, listen, you, you can have that initial experience, and a lot of you have, have, have uh, had, had an experience that they had in Acts 2 where you prayed in a prayer language, you have a prayer language, but you know as well as I know that the quickening and the anointing and the moment of the power, we have to walk in a discipline, and I'm going to share some words of Smith Wigglesworth of his philosophy and ministry at the very end of this, and I want you to grab a hold of that and have your pens ready to write that down. Are you ready? Smith Wigglesworth was born in 1859 to a poor family. His father did manual labor for little pay. Remember, he was born in 1859. Smith himself went to work at the age of six to help with family income. That's how poor they were. At six, he was pulling turnips, and at seven, he was working in a woolen mill 12 hours a day. His parents did not know God, but Smith hungered in his heart to know God. Even as a youngster, he would pray in the fields as he worked. His grandmother was the critical Christian in his life. She was a Wesleyan Methodist and would take Smith to meetings with her. At one of these meetings, there was a song being sung about Jesus as the Lamb of God. And Smith came into the realization of God's love for him. And his decision to believe Christ for his salvation was decided that day. He was immediately filled with the desire to evangelize and lead his own mother to Christ, which he did. And he led his mother to Jesus Christ. Smith has various church experiences when he was growing up. He first went to the Episcopal Church. Then at 13, he became a part of the Wesleyan Methodist Church. He was 16 when he became involved with the Salvation Army. For those of you who don't know, the Salvation Army in these years was absolutely chock full of the absolute power of God and the Spirit of God, and thousands upon thousands of people were saved through that movement that William Booth began. He felt deeply called to fast and pray. And we'll stop. When he was 16, he became involved in the Salvation Army. Now, this autobiography that I found doesn't say when he was 16 he felt deeply called, but it was right after that, and it feels like to me that what they're saying is when he was 16, he felt deeply called to fast and pray for lost souls. He saw many people come to Christ, so it was 16, because at 17, a mentor shared with him about water baptism, and he decided to be baptized. The Salvation Army was experiencing a tremendous level of the power of God in those days, and he described meetings where many, as he says, would be pr prostrated under the power of the Spirit on their face, lying before God under the power of the Spirit, sometimes for as long as 24 hours at a time, praying. They would pray and fast and cry out for the salvation of 50 or 100 people for that week, and they would see their prayers answered. At 18, Smith left the factory and became a plumber. He moved to Liverpool where, when he was 20 and continued to work during the day and ministered during his free time. He felt called to minister to young people, and he brought them to meetings. These were destitute and ragged, ragged children, poor, whom he would often feed and care for. Hundreds were saved. He's 18. Smith was often asked to speak in salvation meetings when he would break down and, and just weep under the power of God. How many ever had that happen? The Spirit of God land on you and you can't speak. You, you just weep. And that, that happens. It's a real deal. Under such burden for the lost. And many would come to repentance in those meetings through his, uh, this untrained man. At 23, he went back to, to, to Bradford and lived there and continued his work with the Salvation Army. And in the town of Bradford, Smith met Mary Jane Featherstone. She's known as Polly, the daughter of a temperance lecturer. She left home and went to Bradford to, to take a servant's job. One night she was drawn to a Salvation Army meeting and she listened to a woman evangelist, Gypsy Tilly Smith. And Polly gave her heart to Jesus Christ. Smith was in that meeting, and he saw her heart for God. And Polly became an enthusiastic salvationist and was granted a commission by General Booth, William Booth, who started 
the Salvation Army. They developed a friendship, but Polly went to Scotland to help with the new salvation work there, and she eventually moved back to Bradford and ended up marrying Smith Wigglesworth, who was very much in love with her. The couple worked together to evangelize the lost. They opened a small church in a poor part of town. Polly would preach, and Smith would make the altar calls, and for a season, Smith became so busy with his plumbing work that his evangelistic fervor began to wane. And Polly, she continued on, bringing, it brought Smith to conviction. And one day, while Smith was working in the town of Leeds, he heard a divine, he, of a divine healing meeting happening. And he shared it with Polly. He told her about it. And, she, and at that time, Polly needed healing herself, so they went to the meeting, and Polly that night was healed. Well, Wiggle, Smith Wigglesworth struggled with the reality of healing. While being ill himself, he decided to give up the medicine that he was taking and trust God. And Smith Wigglesworth was healed. They had five children, a girl and four boys. And one morning, two of the boys were sick. And the power of God came and they prayed for the boys and they were instantly healed. Smith struggled with the idea that God would use him to heal the sick in general. He would gather up a group of people and drive them to, to get prayer into Leeds. And he, he, he struggled with that God would use him. He knew God healed. So the leaders of that meeting were going to a convention, and they left Smith, Smith Wigglesworth in charge of the meeting. He was horrified at this thought. How could he lead a meeting about divine healing? He tried to pass it off on someone else, but couldn't. Finally, he led the meeting, and several people were healed, and that was it. From then on, Smith began to pray for people for healing as a regular part of ministry. Smith had another leap to, to, to make. He had heard about those Pentecostals, the people that believe about that experience that happened on the day of Pentecost, the, the early harvest celebration, and, uh, and how they were being baptized in the Holy Spirit. So he went to the meetings. He was so hungry for God, he, he created a disturbance, and church members asked him to stop. You know, when you're hungry for God, sometimes you groan, you cry out, you weep, you cry unto the Lord. The Bible has all these phrases about, about passion and emotion and going after God. I remember times when, when Dixie's husband, Mort, would get a hold of God and begin to weep and cry out and begin to shake and, and cry out to God and the power of God. You could feel it as if the whole building were shake, shaking. And his, their son, Audie, the same way when the Holy Spirit would move upon them. Oh, for, for men and women that would get a hold of the altars of God in that way. And so uh, he went to the, he was so hungry, he created a disturbance, and they asked him to stop, and he went to prayer and prayed for four days. Four days. Four days. I thought about that. I fasted and prayed four days, and God gave me exactly what to do, and more importantly, what not to do when I started this church. I fasted the first time for four days when I was a youth pastor in Sheldon and a woman was healed of cancer that I cared about greatly and lived many, many, many years. He fasted four days. Do you love God more than food? Finally, he was getting ready to head home and the Viker's wife prayed for him and he fell under the power of God and, he, and Wigglesworth spoke in tongues. Everything changed after that. He would walk by people and they would come under a conviction of the Holy Spirit and be saved. He began to see miracles and healings and the glory of God would fall when he prayed and when he preached. I tell you, this convicts me. This is a human being. This is Smith Wigglesworth. This is a poor boy that had to go to work when he was six years old. From a nothing family, parents weren't saved. Somehow, God got a hold of his heart. And I believe God can use you no matter what your age is of what I'm talking about here. But I'm wanting to see, have us get a hunger for God, those of us that are here tonight. So Smith had to respond to, to many calls that came in, and he gave up his business. He quit working in secular, and he began to be full-time in ministry. But Polly unexpectedly died in 1913, and this was a huge blow to Smith Wigglesworth. Here's what he did. He prayed for her, and he commanded that death would release her. Did Jesus do that with Lazarus? It seems like, didn't Lazarus raise from the dead? Smith Wigglesworth said, death, release her. 
and she rose up. She rose from the dead. She was dead and she rose up. And, as, and it says that Smith Wigglesworth, she told him, Polly said, Smith, the Lord wants me. And his heartbroken response was, if the Lord wants you, I will not hold you. And she had been his light and joy for all the years of their marriage. And he grieved deeply over the loss. And after his wife was buried, he went to her grave feeling like he wanted to die when God told him to get up and go. Uh, and then Smith Wigglesworth told God, I will go, God, but only if you will give me a double portion of the spirit, my wife's and my own. I would go and preach the gospel. And God was gracious, uh, Smith said, and answered my request. Now his daughter, he had a daughter, one of his, his only daughter, he had three sons and a daughter, a daughter and his son-in-law, James Salter began to travel with him and handle his affairs. And Smith would pray and the blind would see. The deaf were healed. People came out of wheelchairs. Cancers were uh, destroyed. And one remarkable story is when he prayed for a woman in a hospital. When he and the friend were praying right there, as they were praying, I've never had this happen, and I sure don't want it to. So God, you hear my you hear that? I do not want this to happen to me. He and his friend were praying for her. She died as they were praying. So he took her out of the bed. This is weird, but now remember, he started working when he was six, and he was really poor, so he'd seen a lot of things. He had a lot of faith by now because he was just absolutely chock full of the Holy Spirit, and he could see through eyes of God. He took her up out of the bed. He stood her against the wall and said, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke this death. And her whole body, it says, history says, she began to tremble. And then he said, in the name of Jesus, walk. And she walked. And everywhere he would go, he would teach and then show the power of God. He began to, uh, to uh, receive requests from all over the world. Smith Wigglesworth taught in Europe, Asia, New Zealand, and many other areas. And when the crowds became very large, he began, quote, unquote, wholesale healing as he wouldn't be able to pray for each one of them, he would just have everyone who needed healing lay hands on themselves, and then he would pray, and hundreds upon hundreds would be healed at one time. Over Smith's ministry, it was confirmed that 14 people were, were raised from the dead, and thousands were saved and healed and impacted whole continents for Christ. Smith died March 12, 1947. He died while he was at a funeral of a dear friend. I, I, that's another thing I've never had happen that I don't want to happen. I do not want someone to die while I'm doing a funeral, nor do I want to die while I'm at a funeral. God, hear me. So uh, it was Wilf Richardson. His ministry was based on four principles, and here they are. These are some things you might want to write down. First, read the Word of God. Second, consume the Word of God until it consumes you. Third, believe the word of God. And fourth, act on the word of God. Now, here's the thing. Since then, we've been dismayed because of people like Peter Popoff, who wears an inner ear piece and has his gurus catch people coming into his healing meetings, strikes up conversations, make notes about them, watches where they sit, finds out what they're there to be prayed for, and then speaks to him off stage on the one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh, eighth row sits Cleo. Cleo's here, and she's been having migraine headaches for years. Cleo lives in Des Moines, Iowa, and she's come to this meeting believing God to be healed of migraines. So he'd get up and say this because they were telling him all this, and everybody's going, ooh. Guess what? He's, mo he's mocking and taking upon himself to do what God really can do. And therefore, people don't believe God can do that because there is a thing of word of knowledge. There is a thing of word of wisdom. There is a thing of miracles. And God can reveal things to you because that's a power when you witness to be able to have the ability to know something about someone. Otherwise, you wouldn't know and you begin to speak to them. And as Jesus did at the woman at the well when he said how many husbands you had and that you're, the man you're with now, you're not married to. she go, whoa. But Jesus didn't have a little thing in his ear and there was nobody checking out what was going on at the, at the gate of the well. Are you with me? 
because it's real. And I'm not going to go any more other than Peter Popoff because of the rest of it, I might offend someone. But Peter was actually caught and a, bit, a, big, a big deal on it. And they recorded these people. And they watched him. They were there in his meetings. And he was put out of business for a little while, but he's back in business now. He's in, he was in California last I heard. At least the last I heard he's in business. Peter, stop it. If you're still doing it, please don't do that anymore. God be with you. I don't, I, I, I don't want to say we're all imperfect and I, may God have mercy on all of us, but may you not do that because God really can do these things. So uh, that's, that's uh, Smith Wigglesworth. Now, just to share a couple more things. Smith talks about, uh, he has an article that he wrote on, how, on this very thing of power, you shall receive power. And he says, the di- disciples had been asking, this is Acts 1, the Lord uh, when would he restore the kingdom of God again to Israel? And Christ told him that was not for them to know the times and the seasons which the Father had put in his own power, but he promised them, as we just read in Acts 1, 8, they'd receive the Holy Ghost and they would receive power to be witnesses for him in all the world. To receive the Holy Ghost is to receive power with God and power with men. This is Wigglesworth's words. There is a power of God and there's a power which is of Satan. And when the Holy Spirit fell in the early days, a number of spiritists would come to the meetings. And they thought we had received something like they had and they were coming to have a good time. What does that sound like? It sounds like the guy that wanted to buy the power uh, uh, in, in, in Acts, wanted to buy when, he, when people lay hands and they would speak in other tongues. And they would come to the meetings and they thought they'd received something that they had. They were coming to have a good time. They filled the two front rows of the mission that we were in, where Wigglesworth says. And when the power of God fell, these imitators began their shaking and muttering under the power of the devil. The Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon me, and I cried, Now, you devils, clear out! And they went out. I followed them right into the street, and they turned around and began cursing me. There was power from below, but it's no match for the power of the Holy Ghost, and soon they had their retreat. One of the things that blocks power is the fake power, people that are not of God, people that are of the flesh, people that want to put on shows as opposed to seek God and crucify the flesh and fast and pray and hunger for God and sincerely go after God with all of their hearts in private, filling themselves with the Word, consuming the Word until it consumed them, believing that Word and acting on that Word. That's what Wigglesworth said. So he goes on, the Lord wants all people say to receive the power from on high, the power to witness, the power to act, the power to live, the power to show forth the divine manifestation of God within. The power of God will take you out of your own plans and put you into the plans of God. You will be unmantled, divested of that which is purely of yourself and put in a divine order. These are Smith, 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 Smith Wigglesworth words. The Lord will change you and put his mind where yours was and thus enable you to have the mind of Christ. And instead of you laboring according to your own plan, it will be God working in you through you to do his own good pleasure through the power of the Spirit within you. Someone has said that you are no good until you, you have your I, quote unquote, I knocked out. In other words, self. Christ must reign within and the life in the Holy Ghost means at all times subjection of your will to make way for the working out of God and his acceptable perfect will of God within. I was holding a meeting once in London, he says, and at the close, a man came to me and said, we are now allowed to hold meetings in this hall after 11 o'clock, and we would like you to come home with us. I'm so hungry for God. The wife said she was too, very hungry, and I agreed to go with them. About 12.30 at night, we arrived at their house. The man began stirring up the fire and said, now we will have a good supper. I said to him, I did not come here for your warm fire or your supper uh, I, uh, uh, or, or your bed. I came here because I thought you were hungry to get more of God. We got down to pray, and about 3.30, the Lord baptized the wife with the Holy Spirit. She spoke in tongues, and the Spirit gave utterance. At about 5 o'clock, I spoke to the husband and asked how he was getting along. He replied, God has broken my iron, stubborn will. Now, he had not received uh, the, the, the spirit language of the, of the baptism, and, but God wrought a mighty work within him. 
The following day at his business, everyone could tell a great change had happened to this man. Before he had been walking a walking terror, the men who labored for him had looked upon him as a regular devil because of the way he acted. But coming in time, contact with the power of God that night completely changed that man. Before this, he had made a religious profession, but he had never truly entered into the experience of new birth until that night. And when the power of God surged so mightily through his home, he found it. A short while afterwards, he said, I, I found that. A short while afterwards, I went to this man home and his two sons ran to me and kissed me saying, this is Wigglesworth, There's his sons ran to him and kissed him and said, we have a new father. See, previous to, these, to this, these boys had often said to their mother, mother, we cannot stand it in the home any longer. We have to leave. But the Lord changed that, that whole situation that night as we prayed together. And on the second visit, the Lord baptized this man in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will reveal false positions and pull down the mask of any refuge of lies and clean up and remove false conditions. When the Holy Spirit came in, that man's house and business and himself were entirely changed. I'm gonna tell you, when the Holy Spirit's big and full, the devil can't beat you up with his lies. One of the greatest songs ever written was by a group, I can't think of the name of the group, but it's called The Voice of Truth. Who, who is that group? Point of Grace. Casting crowns, but the voice of truth tells me a different story. That is a great song because that's what the devil does. His chief tool from the very beginning is to lie, tell you, you can't do this. God won't move through you. There will be no miracle, and he'll point to anything and everything that's, that's not right. Listen, we're not called to look back and go, there are times when someone dies. Like, did Smith explain why his wife died? And she said, she said when he, you know, God wants me? Did Smith explain it? No. Smith went on and believed God, and I think we have to believe God because so many times we talk about healing, we think about, but, but, but I know this, and we're conditioned to brace ourselves and pray pitifully and, and unexpectedly, but God is a great God that can do all things. So Wigglesworth goes on. He says, when the Holy Spirit comes in, he comes to the power of you to be an effective witness. At, at one time, we were holding some special meetings, he says, and I was out distributing, uh, uh, he calls them bills, but they were flyers. I went into a shoemaker's store and there was a man with a green shade over his eyes and also a cloth. My heart looked up to the Lord and I had the witness within me that he was ready to change any condition in his heart. The man was crying, oh, oh, oh. I asked, what's the trouble? He said he was suffering from great inflammation and just burning. I said, I rebuke this condition in Jesus' name. Oh, what a powerful name, Jesus. He said, I rebuke it. I'm just thinking of that song. Instantly, the Lord healed him. He took off the shade and cloth and said, look, it's all gone, look. And at one time, a lady wrote and asked if, if I could go and help her. She said that she was blind, having two blood clots behind her eyes. When I reached the house, they brought the blind woman to me. We were together for some time, and then power of God fell. Rushing to the window, she exclaimed, I can see, I can see, oh, I can see. The blood is gone, I can see. She then inquired about receiving the Holy Spirit and confessed that for 10 years, she had been fighting our position on the Holy Spirit power. She said, I could not bear these tongues, but God has settled the whole thing today. I know I want that baptism of the Holy Ghost. And the Lord graciously baptized her in the Spirit. The Holy Spirit will come when a man is cleansed. There must be a purging of the old life. You know, that, that waiting upon the Lord and seeking God and taking time is a part of that. And he tells us this in this uh, little devotion. And he said, I never saw anyone baptized who was not clean within. I remember being in a meeting at one time where there was a man seeking the baptism and he looked like he was in trouble. He was very restless. And finally he said to me, I, I will have to go. I said, what's up? He said, God is unveiling something to me. He said, I feel so unworthy. I said, repent of everything that's wrong. He continued to tarry and the Lord continued to search his heart. In these times of waiting on God, uh, here's where it says, and he continued to tarry and the Lord continued to search his heart. And, and Wigglesworth says, these times of waiting on God for the fullness of the spirit are times when he searches the heart and tries, to, tries the reins. He tries us. Later, the man said to me, I have a hard thing to do, the hardest thing I've ever had to do. I said to him, tell the Lord you will do it and never mind the consequences. So he agreed and the next morning, he took a ride of 30 miles and to go with a bag of gold to a certain party with whom he dealt. 
This man had a hundred of uh, uh, had a hundred of cattle and bought all his feed at a certain place. He always paid his accounts on a certain day, but one day he missed. He always was so punctual in paying his accounts that when the people of his uh, form went over their books, they thought they must have made a mistake in not crediting this man with the money. So they sent him a receipt, assuming he had paid, because he always paid every time. But the man never intended not to pay the account, but if you defer to do a right thing, the devil will see that you never do it. So he was sitting there, letting, holding the receipt, not having paid. But when the man was seeking the Lord that night, the Lord dealt with him on this point, and he had to go and straighten the thing the next morning. He paid the count in full, and then the Lord baptized him in the Holy Spirit. They that bear vessels of the Lord must be clean and must be holy. He, he, he tells of, of many other things that went on there, and I'm going to stop because there's so many more things. And there's a book about Smith Wigglesworth. There's a, there's a devotion about Smith, Smith Wigglesworth. And I urge you to read his writings because this man was real, and it's documented. This is not a fake thing. And there's no, no dirt in this man's background and history. Uh, in fact, Brother Tossin, didn't you give me a book? Didn't you give me a book by Smith Wigglesworth? I'm almost positive you did. Uh, you don't know you give so many books away. He wants to give more books away. If you want some books, see Brother Tossin. He's got a lot of books he'd like to give you away, and Cleo's encouraging it. He's got great books. Uh, but anyway, what I'm trying, what I want to tell you is this, guys. Here, here's the thing. I believe that somebody has to pay a, a price of laying their life truly down and believing God. Because this baptism of the Spirit is not just about watch me speak with the language. It's about power to be witnesses. And what happens when someone lays a hand on the blind and they see? You know, when there's a fire in the neighborhood, what do the neighbors do? They come out and watch it. When there's a fire of the Holy Spirit and God's Spirit begins to move, and convict hearts and cleanse people, and the power of God rests on people, people will come. And I'm telling you, this our world needs a mighty move of God with great power and demonstration of the Spirit that the Bible speaks of. Now, I, I believe we have the Spirit. I, I believe, in fact, uh, even this morning again, uh, I had people telling me, boy, they can just sense the, the presence of God strong in this place. And it's the number one thing I hear when people come and they stay here because and it's that power of God's love and his presence, his spirit. But let me tell you, there is a power that is a power that is able to do anything to convince anybody whatever is needed so that souls will be saved because that's the end result. If we want the power to show how powerful we are and do little magic tricks on the side, we got a Pentecostal sideshow. But if we want the power to be witnesses to see souls saved and you're caught like Polly was uh, and wanting to evangelize the world and see souls saved in the way Smith Wigglesworth was, was and you want to see souls saved, God wants to see souls saved and you're in the business and when you go into the world and lo, I am with you, Jesus said. So when you go to be a witness, he's going to be with you and his power will go with you and his word will be powerful and not return void. And I'm telling you that we need a, a mighty move of God where somebody will get a hold of God and pay the price. And I plan on being at least one of them. And I ask you to pray for me, if nothing else, that God will help me. Because I'll tell you what, this flesh wants to eat. How many got flesh that wants to eat? And nothing wrong with eating. But sometimes to get a spiritual appetite, we got to set aside food and let our spirit get alive. Smith Wigglesworth, I was reading elsewhere, talks about how you can hear Jesus as if he's in the same room speaking to you audible when you get before God and you fast and you hunger and you wait on God and you seek God. It becomes so real to you. I've been there, I know what it's like, and I've been where I know about it but not walking in it. I want to walk in the fullness of the God's Spirit. I'm going to urge you to, to, to read over Romans 6 and read over Romans 8. Pastor Hawkins had a great message in Romans 8 a couple, three Sunday nights ago. And I want you to read over Romans 6 and Romans 8. And I want you to begin to think, of your, think to yourself how you can be spirit-led, spirit-empowered, spirit-fullness. We are not to be weaklings. We are powerful. We have the power by God's spirit to pull down strongholds. 
that he is able and abundantly uh, able to do exceedingly abundantly all that we ask for according to the power of his spirit working in us. We are the people of the spirit. We know about it. We believe in it. We got to get a hold of it. Amen? All right. Or else we'll walk by the flesh that leads to death. Well, I, I went kind of long, but Pastor Hawkins was short this morning, and I just thought you got cheated, so I'll, I just wanted to make up for it, Pastor Hawkins. He's always on because I, I'm long-winded. I, I, I know I am, but we need, to, we, we need to do more less preaching and more praying. So would you stand with me? Here's what I, I, need. I need. I don't need a, 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 a church service response. I want us to sing that song, though, guys, that, that song about the powerful name, what a beautiful name. Because I just it struck me that's the song that we need to leave with. I don't need us to, I, I, I want to open the altars for prayer, but here's the thing. I don't need just a 30-minute altar response. I need, a, I need a week-long heart response. Do you get what I'm saying? Go in your closet. You know what the Lord spoke to me over here? The Lord spoke to me when we were worshiping, and I realize there's not many people here, and some people like you know, they like, they like to have it full and you can worship and sense. I, I like that too. But um, the Lord spoke to me, said, you know, if every person that showed up for church would truly tune in and sincerely with everything within them, bless God, worship in spirit and truth, that my presence would show up so strong. But we have a lot of people that come, they sing the songs and it's maybe a doctrinal expression or they just got their intellect going or it's just a little bit. But I'm talking about enter in into the presence of God and the Spirit of God and worship Jesus. Could we do that right now at this last song and let the Holy Spirit call you to fasting and praying and to see the Holy Spirit power to be Pentecostal people in not just doctrine, are because there's a tongue involved, but in the walk of the Spirit-led life and the fruit life and the gifts life and the power life. Amen? That's what we want to do.